Hello and welcome back to another video on the XMoose channel. In today's video, I will explain and prove with authentic sources why Doomsday, Yom al qiyam or the Day of Resurrection has already happened, and why this proves Islam is just another man-made religion. As always, I will use the Quran, Sayyid Hadiths, and Tafsirs to justify my arguments. Without further ado, here we go. Prophecies in Islam in the Quran, chapter 7, verse 187, Allah says, No one except Allah knows when the day of judgment is, and it will not come unexpectedly. Now this is the day when all of humanity will be judged, from Prophet Adam, the first human being, to the last human being. And this is the day God will decide whether you're going to heaven or hell. No one knows when the world is going to end, but according to Muslims and Islam, there are signs in the Quran and Sayyid Hadiths that must be fulfilled in order for the end of times to occur. Muslims believe whenever a prophecy from the Quran or Hadiths is fulfilled, that means Judgment Day is closer and time is running out. A prophecy is a prediction of something to come, and according to many Hadiths, Muhammad said the last hour will not come unless so and so signs are fulfilled. Prophet Muhammad's sayings on the subject has been traditionally divided into two categories, Major and Minor Signs The Major Signs Now these are signs that Muslims claim have not happened yet, thus categorized as Major Signs. Here is a quick rundown on 11 Major Signs that will happen in the future prior to the Day of Judgment, according to the Quran and Hadiths. Please note, these signs aren't in chronological order because no one knows when each sign will take place. Sign number 1 Men will decrease and women will increase so much so that for every 50 women, there will be one man to look after them. Sign number two, Ad-Dajjal, the false messiah, or the Antichrist, will appear with one eye blinded, and he will create an army of disbelievers. Sign number three, the Mahdi, a descendant from Muhammad, will appear and unite the Muslim nations. He'll lead the caliphate and will build a Muslim army to fight against the Ad-Dajjal. Sign number four. Prophet Isa, Jesus, will descend from the heavens, carried by angels on each side of him, and he will break the cross, kill the pigs, and abolish the jizya tax. And then the army of Imam Mahdi and Jesus will battle the army of Ad-Dajjal, and Jesus will kill the false messiah. Later, world! Smell my ass! <coughs> Sign number five. Yaju and Maju, Gog and Magog, will be released from a barrier, and billions of them will swarm the earth and cause chaos. Eventually, all of them will get killed instantly by a type of worm sent by Allah. Then there will be world peace for years and years, until Prophet Isa, Jesus, dies. Sign number six, a fog or smoke will cover the skies for 40 days. It will be a painful torment covering for the disbelievers, but for Muslims, they will only get coals from it. The non-believers will fall unconscious while Muslims will get ill. Sign number seven. The sun will rise from the west and set in the east. And the moment the sun arises from the west, the repentance window is closed, and your repentance to Allah will not be accepted afterwards. Sign number eight. A beast from within the earth will emerge and will be able to talk to people and mark the faces of people, making the Muslims' faces glow and the non-Muslims' faces darkened. Sign number nine. A pleasant breeze from the south will cause all the Muslims to die peacefully, so only the disbelievers will be alive on earth. Sign number ten. The Kaaba is destroyed, the Quran is forgotten, and Islam is dead, so only non-Muslims will be living on earth. And lastly, sign number eleven. There will be three major sinkings of the earth, east, west, and in Arabia and a fire will follow people to Syria. Then angel Israfil will blow the trumpet, and the day of judgment will commence for all of creation. The Minor Signs Now let's take a look at the minor signs, prophecies that Muslims claim have already happened or are currently happening. According to the Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, an indication of the last day is when the slave girl will give birth to her master. Now, most Muslims play mind gymnastics and believe this figuratively refers to today's modern society, how disobedient kids are treating their mothers as slaves, 
with humiliation, insults, and hitting and servitude. However, this hadith is very vague, and the logical interpretation is Muhammad was referring to actual slaves. Since 1400 years ago, Muhammad himself owned over 27 slaves. It would make more sense that Muhammad prophesied slave girls physically giving birth to their masters, and not figuratively speaking, because Muhammad himself owned male and female slaves. He bought and sold slaves, and the Quran even allows slavery. According to the Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, another indication of the last day is when the shepherds of black camels start boasting and competing with others in the construction of higher buildings. Now, this Hadith is pretty vague and up to many interpretations. Most Muslims believe this refers to how people in the Arabian Peninsula are competing with one another in creating tall skyscrapers, like the Burj Khalifa and the Jeddah Tower. However, a more logical interpretation is Muhammad ripped off the Jewish and Christian story on Babylon Tower. According to the Tower of Babel, a story told in Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 to 9, people agreed to build a city and a tower tall enough to reach heaven. God, observing their city and tower, confounds their speech so that they can no longer understand each other and scatters them around the world. There are many other similar ancient stories like this. The creation of high structures such as buildings, temples, walls, has always been seen as a form of defiance against divine order, especially in the Abrahamic faiths. The Tower of Babel represents the pride of mankind wanting to reach the heavens and be their own gods. Again, this hadith is not extremely accurate, it's just a vague description of high buildings. If you reread this hadith, Muhammad said that these buildings would be built by shepherds of black camels. And in another Sahih Hadith, Muhammad says it will be built by barefooted, poor goat shepherds. The last time I checked, poor, barefooted goat shepherds and black camel shepherds didn't build the Burj Khalifa, or any buildings for that matter. According to the Sahih Bukhari Hadith, Muhammad said, The hour will not be established until knowledge will be taken away. Earthquakes will be frequent, time will pass quickly, afflictions will appear, murders will increase, and money will overflow amongst you. Now, at a quick glance at this hadith, you might think Muhammad predicted it right 1400 years ago, but nope, he was again wrong, and I'll break it down why for you. For starters, knowledge is not being taken away. We are currently living in the golden age of information in the 21st century. According to Google's old CEO, Eric Schmidt, we create as much information in two days now as we did from the dawn of mankind through 2003. You can learn about anything in the world, from biology to history, at any time from a magic box in your pocket. And with all the recent devastating earthquakes that happened in Haiti, Chile, China, Indonesia, Pakistan, you might get the impression that earthquakes are increasing every year. But looking at the earthquake statistics over the last 20 years shows that this is not the case. According to the British Geological Survey Natural Environment Research Council, on average there have been 15 earthquakes every year with a magnitude of 7 or greater for the past two decades. It has actually remained at an average rate and has not been increasing every year. And time doesn't go faster. The feeling of time passing quickly is a natural human phenomenon. When you are bored, you are more aware of the time passing, and when you are having fun, your mind is occupied and thus does not pay much attention to the time passing. New experiences will stick to your memory better. More unique events will make a day longer in memory. Therefore, it can be assumed that for every year you are not experiencing something new, the less you will remember of it, and it will seem time is passing by quickly. Memory serves as one of the ways we measure time. Our neurons slow down as we age, so we have fewer thoughts in the same amount of time. And for afflictions, yes, diseases have appeared, but we have cured the majority of them. Never before in human history have people been more protected from hundreds of thousands of potential diseases and afflictions. Sure, antibiotic resistance is a problem, but we aren't about to crash back to pre-1920s levels of infectious diseases. And contrary to all the garbage you see on the news, technically we are currently living in the golden age of peace. This is the longest we've gone without a massive widespread killing and war. Global rates of violent crimes are at an all-time low. 
Less wars are going on. Less people are dying in said wars, historically speaking. The media has begun reporting on it a lot more, which is why you see a lot more even though all the numbers are down, still going down. When you hear about it nonstop, you think the problem is much worse than it actually is. Money will overflow amongst you. As much as I want to agree with Mohammed on this one, money has not been overflowing amongst us. According to Oxifam, a confederation of 20 independent charitable organizations, in 2017 it was calculated that the world's eight richest individuals had as much wealth as the poorest half of the world. That means more than $8 of every $10 of wealth created last year went to the richest 1%. I don't see how money can overflow amongst you. The minor signs are signs that already happened and ended and they will never happen again. Like the sending of the Prophet ﷺ, like the death of the Prophet ﷺ, like the plague of Amwas that happened around the 24th after Hijrah. That would be considered major sign or minor? No, no, minor. I'm, minor. I'm, 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 cat, I'm, cat, I'm sub, subbing the minor signs. Signs that happened and they will never happen again because they are done. Signs that happened and they keep happening, but they happen in a, a greater magnitude, like adultery is growing, uh, usury is growing, killing is growing, earthquake. It happened, initially started, but now with the magnitude, the more you approach the hour, uh, the more, uh, yani the magnitude, the, 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 yeah. the greatness of their happening can, is... Can you say these are prophecies being fulfilled? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, actually, a lot of the scholars with the fact that the minor signs are almost done. Mm -hmm. uh, so this would be also more, you can add this as proof of uh, prophethood. Absolutely. Prophet Muhammad, peace be this upon. is why we should study it. Yeah. The speaker is right. We should study it. Because if we actually studied the Hadiths, we would know that the Day of Judgment has already happened. End of times has already happened. According to the Quran, chapter 25, verse 59, Allah says He created the heavens and the earth and what is between them in six days. And according to the influential Persian Islamic scholar Muhammad ibn Jari al-Tabari, who was born in the year 839 AD, in Tafsir al-Tabari, volume 1, page 224, he said, Each day of the six in which Allah created corresponds to a thousand years. And the conclusion is that the time elapsed from when Allah first began creating His creations to when He finished the last of them is six or seven thousand years, give or take. According to this tafsir, it took seven thousand earth days or seven days of the other world for Allah to create His creatures. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? As usual, with Islam, this concept was plagiarized from the Bible. In the book of Psalm, Chapter 90, verse 4, it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Furthermore, in Tafsir al-Tabari, volume 1, page 181, Muhammad said, I was sent immediately before the coming of the hour. I preceded it like this one preceding that one, referring to his two fingers, the index finger and the middle finger. Abu Abdullah described it to us by holding the two fingers together. Also in this Sahih Bukhari Hadith, Muhammad said, the time of my arrival and the hour are like these two fingers. And on page 183, the Messenger of God, Muhammad said, Indeed, God will not make this nation incapable of lasting half a day, referring to the day of a thousand years. Islamic scholar Tabari concludes, Since the Prophet's statement, the time of this world that has elapsed was 6,500 years. This means one, Muhammad and his companions used to believe the earth was 6,500 years old, and two, based on Muhammad's prophecy, doomsday should have occurred 500 years after this revelation. Muhammad said this around 613 AD. So according to Muhammad, the world should have ended in the year 1113 AD. And we all know that the year 1113 has passed for quite some time. We are currently living in the year 2018 AD without the prophecy of the infallible prophet having coming true. Either Muhammad was lying all along or he was right and we're currently living in the afterlife. In this Sahih Bukhari Hadith, Muhammad came to his wife in a state of fear and said, Woe unto the Arabs from a danger that has come near. An opening has been made in the wall of Gog and Magog like this, making a circle with his thumb and index finger. Yaju and Maju, Gog and Magog, 
have already pierced the wall, which means the last hour must be near. But it's been over 1400 years, so where are they? In this Sahih Bukhari Hadith, Muhammad saw an eclipse and believed it was the apocalypse. It says the sun eclipsed and Muhammad got up, being afraid that it might be the hour. Apparently, eclipses are signs from Allah to make his worshippers fear him. According to the Sahih Bukhari Hadith, no one knows the sex of a fetus except Allah. And in the Quran, chapter 31, verse 34, it says only Allah, the All-Knower, knows what's in the womb. But Allah isn't the only one. Right here in the 21st century, doctors can use diagnostic sonography or medical ultrasounds. Ultrasounds are used to see internal body structures, such as tendons, muscles, joints, blood vessels, and internal organs. Its aim is often to find a source of a disease or exclude any pathology. Ultrasound imaging can also show pregnant mothers what gender their 18-week-old unborn fetus will be born as, male or female. According to the Sayyid Muslim Hadith, Anas ibn Malik reported that a young boy of Mukhri ibn Shuba, another companion of Muhammad, happened to pass by the Prophet, and he was of my age. Thereupon, God's Messenger said if he lives long, he would not grow very old till the last hour would come. And according to the Sayyid Muslim Hadith, Anas ibn Malik reported that a person asked Allah's Apostle, when will the last hour come? Thereupon, Muhammad kept quiet for a while then looked at a young boy in his presence belonging to the tribe of Azd Shanua, and he said, if this boy lives, he would not grow very old till the last hour would come to you. Anas said that this young boy was of our age during these days. Looking at these two Sahih Hadiths, Muhammad foretold that the last hour would not come until a 10-year-old boy at the time of Muhammad would become old. Well, it's been quite some time. That boy is dead. That boy would have to be 1,406 years old in 2018. According to the Sayyid Muslim Hadith, Muhammad's companions asked him about the last hour. Thereupon Allah's Messenger said, There would be none amongst the created beings living on earth who would survive this century. According to the Sayyid Muslim Hadith, one month before his death, Muhammad said, I, however, take an oath and say that none upon the earth, the created beings, from amongst my companions, would survive at the end of 100 years. According to the Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, during the last days of Muhammad's life, Muhammad said, Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight will be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. According to all three of these Sayyid Hadiths, Prophet Muhammad prophesied that no living creature from his time will survive for over a hundred years. But didn't Muhammad know that some animals can live over a century? Red sea urchins, tortoises, bowhead whales, Greenland sharks, ocean quahogs, and the infamous immortal jellyfishes can live for a very, very long time. Hell, even trees live for thousands of years. According to the Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, Muhammad said, The hour will not be established till the buttocks of the women of the tribe of Dawus move while going around the al Qalasia. The al Qalasia was the idol of the Dawus tribe, which they used to worship in the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. It seems that the hour cannot be established, because this idol no longer exists, and the tribe was fractured and dispersed a long time ago. And according to the Sayyid Bukhari Hadith, Jabir ibn Abdullah went out with 50 of his men to Dhai al Qalasa and burnt it. If Muhammad had the idol and entire temple destroyed, then how can this prophecy ever be fulfilled? It looks like the last hour isn't coming anytime soon. According to the Sayyid Hadith, Constantinople will be conquered with the coming of the hour. And according to the Sayyid Muslim Hadith, after Constantinople is conquered and won by the Muslims against the Romans, the Dajjal, the false messiah, will appear, and then Jesus shortly after. This Sayyid Muslim Hadith says, Dajjal will not appear until you have fought the Romans. This Da'if, weak Hadith, says that the Dajjal will appear seven months after conquering of Constantinople. Well... Constantinople doesn't even exist anymore. The modern Turkish name for the city is now Istanbul. Constantinople used to be the capital city of the Roman, Byzantine, Ottoman empires. It was founded in 330 AD 
and the fall of Constantinople happened in the year 1453 AD. Constantinople was conquered by Sultan Mehmed II of the Ottoman Empire. It was later renamed to Istanbul to express the city's new role as the capital of the Islamic Ottoman Empire. If Constantinople was conquered 821 years after the death of Muhammad, then where is the false messiah in Jesus? Muhammad said Constantinople will be conquered with the coming of the hour, and it's currently been 565 years since the extinction of Constantinople. And Prophet Muhammad said, Dijal will not appear until you have fought the Romans, and the Roman Empire doesn't even exist anymore. It seems highly unlikely and impossible that Istanbul might be recaptured by the Romans in the future and be renamed to Constantinople. The city of Constantinople was named after Constantine the Great, a Christian Roman emperor. And Turkey today is entirely Muslim. Romans don't even exist anymore, and Christianity is literally dying in the West. Logically speaking, to rename it Constantinople is just not possible. I don't know what Muslims are waiting for if the Day of Judgment has already passed by, according to Prophet Muhammad himself. The concept of Judgment Day is of course copied from the traditions of the Jews and the Christians, since neither Muhammad nor his pagan Arabs had such a belief in their simple pagan religion prior to the Quranic revelations. In conclusion, we learned that the Islamic end of times has already happened. The world still exists 500 years after the death of Muhammad. Gog and Magog have already pierced the wall. A young boy during Muhammad's time is now dead. Living creatures from Muhammad's time have survived the century. And Muhammad had the Dio al Qurasa idol and the entire temple destroyed, so that specific prophecy can never be fulfilled. And we learned that Constantinople was conquered 565 years ago, and the Dijal and Prophet Isa never descended. I frankly don't know what Muslims are waiting for if the Day of Judgment has already passed by, according to Prophet Muhammad himself. Till next time, and let the truth set you free.